So hi everyone, welcome back to another week of classes. Today we're going to be talking about the top three comps that performed very well at the recent North American regionals that just finished this past weekend. Although the regionals games were played on patch 14.3, there are very small changes from 14.3b compared to the live servers, which is 14.4. So none of these comps have been affected. Uh, so don't worry about like the patch. This is just... Um, showing the the correct patch but there's not much difference uh so yeah table of contents for today as i mentioned we're just going to talk about a couple of the top comps that performed extremely well during the tournament um i'll just talk about who our reps are from north america and then we're going to dive into our comps so the first one true damage center comp it got buffed recently and it has just been crushing ever since we'll talk about how to play that pentacle kale even though it got nerfed twice so not only did her headliner attack speed get nerfed and then her actual damage got nerfed both were very small nerfs and she's still very applicable so we'll talk about these two rerolls why rerolling is um quote unquote better or even just like good in tournaments uh, i'll talk about the pros and cons but uh we'll just talk about like the stability in general and then last but not least we'll talk about heart's LED flex which is the most played comp throughout the tournaments we'll talk about its pros and cons its high risk high reward and the different versions of that so if you are watching this in the discord feel free to ask any questions if they come about and if you're watching this on youtube check out the discord check out the description of the youtube channel and or the youtube video and join us okay <clears throat> so let's get into it uh the top three comps from any regionals that just passed first i'll talk about our north american world reps uh so here are the seeds from each reason each region uh because this is a north american uh i guess youtube channel and i'm playing on the north american server uh, i'm just gonna talk about na so dish soap malala weird and degree we're all able to make it and they are going to be our north american reps and then we have our different slots like CN, EMEA, uh, KR, BR, etc. And then as I mentioned, uh, although that the regionals was played on 30.4B, 14.4, um, it's very small changes. And the comps that are talked about today are all still applicable. So if you're excited for Worlds, then uh, yeah, here are North American reps. Good job. Okay, so moving on to the actual comps. Now we're getting into the actual bread and butter of today's class. We're going to be talking about true damage center reroll as our initial comp. Now, what is true damage center reroll? How does the comp function? Basically, we're front to back, so we're hitting the enemy main, enemy frontline tanks first before moving on to their backline. We are going to be doing true damage and mixed damage. So true damage, of course, we're playing true damage, so our damage amplified 45% uh, is going to be true damage. And then mixed damage because we have both uh, a couple carries here. So Senna, of course, is going to be our main one. And she deals magic damage. However, I call it as physical damage. So not only do we get true damage, we get physical and we get magic damage, which means that it's really hard for the opponents to itemize against us, apart from just building flat HP as a uh, resource or I guess a, as a defense against all these different sorts of damage. So that's what this whole comp is. Talk about best in slot center real quick. So Shojin Italicize, this is going to be our super fan item because we will be playing three super fan as with most if not all of the reroll comps on this current patch. Um, then we're going to look for an attack speed item to work with this Shojin. So either a Nashers or a red buff. And then our very last one is going to be a damage amp. So either Rabadon's Morello or Giant Slayer. Although Morello is not necessarily damage amp, uh, sometimes, well, actually all the time you do need healing reduction. And if you don't have any other form of that, and you only have one rod, then Morello is a very good item. So if you put it all together, we have mana gen, attack speed to work with the mana gen, plus a little bit of damage slash utility, and then a damage amp to actually deal damage. Now in the stats, it shows that Nashers and Rabadons are the best. So if like theoretically the best this for Senna is going to be Shojin, Nashers, then Rabadons, and th that's your Senna. So we'll talk about how to get the Senna 3. We're going to be rolling for Senna, the rapid fire version. So as you see here, the headliner is going to be 2 out of 2 rapid fire. We'll talk about why in a second. You'll be rolling for this on level 6. So as mentioned in almost every real video, this will either be on 3-2 or 3-5. This is the time you're going to be uh, leveling to 6 and then rolling for the Senna. Once you hit, you're then going to wait uh, and stop rolling unless you need to roll some more to stabilize your board or hit your low cost units. You're going to end up leveling to 7 and then slow roll for Senna 3. Uh, the reason why we level to 7 is that we're going to hit a bigger spike 
And uh, most of these reroll boards, they spike on seven, being able to play that seventh unit. Uh, so in this case, we drop like the, the Ari. Uh, and then the Kiana would just be like a Yasuo, or we'd just play our strongest board. But regardless, we need to level seven. And then the chances for a two cost unit being in each shop only goes from 40 to 35%. So losing 5% odds per shop slot of a two cost unit for a much stronger board in general and then a much higher chance to hit echo and nico and then uh actually having a feasible chance of hitting a collie is just worth it so that's why we go to seven and that is when we're going to start slow rolling for our center three so once we hit then we can start going to looking to level eight and capping out our board uh if you are having or if you do have an econ augment or even like some sort of like reroll augments um you can go for nico three which is going to be very helpful uh although echo is part of the vertical true damage train or line uh it's still better to itemize nico she's just tankier and more true damage on echo just means more damage but he doesn't really do damage anyway so it doesn't really make sense to itemize him the only time you would is if you have an Echo 2 early and a Nico 1, then you just itemize your Echo 2 uh, for tempo. Positioning wise, I want to make sure, of course, your front line in the very front row. Uh, Nico is going to be in front of Senna because most of the time she will be holding a spark. And although we are doing true damage, we still do magic damage as well from our Senna. So make sure that uh, they are kind of like in parallel in the same line. And then also Senna needs to be positioned to hit the largest clump of enemy targets because she will uh, send her orb. It will bounce twice, or I guess, I guess pulse twice. And then the third one is going to be a large pulse. Uh, so make sure you're hitting as much enemies as possible to make use of your AoE. That's how you play the comp. Uh, some best in slot augments. So blinged out, of course, getting that extra attack speed onto your units and just the augment in general. It just works extremely well because we're vertical true damage anyway. Jewel Lotus 3 is just good in any comp, just more damage, right? Uh, remember your roots because we're playing a vertical trait. A vampirism, learning spell, and then some sort of econ augment uh, on 2 1. Prismatic is extremely good, like March Progress or Shopping Spree. Now, the reason why you want to be doing rapid fire instead of true damage, yes, with true damage uh, headliner, you will be able to hit 6 true damage a lot faster and even mid game it's going to be a lot stronger however later um, a higher cap is to actually play the rapid fire version the reason being is well first off you need rapid fire on Senna to actually help the unit function and cast a lot more and then this way we don't have to play another rapid fire now if we think about it we have two options right because if we pick the true damage headliner versus the rapid fire headliner we're just playing one extra true damage unit or we're playing one extra rapid fire unit right uh, ideally we get a spat on true damage that's the, going to be our highest cap and if we had to think about it we either put the spat on something like an ari which gives us three kda for the entire board so that is going to be H hp attack damage and ability power or we have a caitlin with a true damage spat and then that's it so yes although caitlin with true damage spat, true damage spat used to be extremely good uh now is just good and that is just going to be like a single uh, a single unit on your board that is strong as opposed to playing kda which will buff up the entire board so that's why ari is better and then you could use her as a duo carry so like a blue buff and a nasher or a blue buff and a gunblade will be extremely good uh, we cap out eventually with kiana on our board she'll be able to start farming items uses very similar items as our ari and akali mixed for example like edge of night and a blue buff and then you're good to go. Uh, make sure your Akali has some sort of uh, physical damage items. So like Edge of Night, Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer mixed with true damage is extremely good. And then something, a final item. She has healing built into her kit. So you don't need Bloodthirster. You don't need Hodge. Of course, those are still helpful because healing is still always healing. But if you give her more damage, then she will heal based off how much damage she does. So more damage equals more healing. As long as you have some sort of defensive like an aggro drop. And then she doesn't get targeted. Uh, she doesn't get targeted first by putting her in the second row. And that's that. So this is the center real board. Uh, extremely good. If you're playing this in your games, make sure to call it early, or at least like make sure that your opponents know that you are rerolling Senna because it is extremely hard to play contested and it's uh, it's tough. So that's the true damage center reroll board. Uh, moving on, so our next one is going to be Pentakill Kale. So similar to the true damage board, this is once again front to back. We're hitting the enemy tanks first, and this is going to be another mixed damage comp. Although primarily magic damage, we do have some physical damage coming in from our Akali and our Viego. 
Best in slot Kale is going to be Rage Blade, Rage Blade, and then Gun Blade. So we really get one Rage Blade from our super fan. Same thing. But this time, instead of Kennen, we are playing the Nar for because we're playing Pentakill. And then uh, another Rage Blade, we have to build on our own. And then a Gun Blade. If you don't have Gun Blade, then Rabadon's is suitable, but Gun Blade is much better. So the point of this comp is to really ramp up your attack speed with Kale, be able to do a lot of damage just from your on hit and from your actual spell, and be able to keep your front line alive with that Gun Blade. So it's just a stall comp. Uh, the longer the fight goes, the stronger you are. Same thing as Senna, because this is a 2 cost unit, you're going to be level 6 on 3, 2, or 3, 5. Roll down for your Kale. Edgelord chosen here is better than Pentacle, although we are vertical Pentacle. Reason being is we're able to fit 3 out of 3 Edgelord much easier with the Edgelord chosen. In this case, late game, we have to only play a Viego as opposed to a Viego plus an extra Edgelord, where only Kane would actually be good because a Yas or not a Yasuo, a Yone or a Riven unitemized and uh, not three starred is not going to be doing much on your board. That's why Edgelord is much better than the Pentacle version. Uh, after you hit the actual headliner, then you're going to go level seven once again and then slow roll for your KL3. This is what your level eight board looks like, and you're going to be able to fit in five Pentacle, three Edgelord, and then augment wise. It's kind of similar to the center board because we are playing reroll. March of Progress or Shopping Spree is extremely good. Vampirism is good on any board. HP for the whole board plus Omni Vamp is a very valuable. Uh, in this case, Magic Wand is a very good augment from Pentakill and just the traits in general. Apart, technically, apart from not not KDA, but that's very little AP. Uh, we're not getting any AP from any trait, so getting the extra AP from Magic Wand is very good, and a lot of units are able to make use of this extra AP. And then also getting that rod for half of Rabadons, and then also the half of Gunblade, because we are going to be needing two rods uh, in total for the Kale comp. Yeah, so the following is really good. Remember, this is a stall comp, and Kale can eventually 1v9. Uh, remember your roots, we're playing a vertical comp. Jewel Lotus 3 is just good in any comp. Metal heads, so the Pentakill specific the Pentakill specific augments is really good. The crowd control reduction, or just crowd control uh, not being able to be cc and then the heal on takedown, plus string strikes if you don't have any healing reduction. And then Lucky Streak is on 2-1 only. So don't take this on 3-2, it's too late. Uh, you're able to really build up your Econ early, and then you would just substitute Lucky Streak with the Rage Blade and go uh, Rage Blade from Superfans, Gun Blade, and then the Lucky Streak Gambler's Blade. So this is what the comp looks like. Eventually, you want to 3-star the Mordekaiser as well on level 7, and then from there, uh, you can do basically whatever you want. So depending on what you have on level 7, you can either play the Kali or the Karthus, uh, depending on what you have. And just play your strongest board eventually you go level eight you play this board and then level nine uh you could just play a stronger version maybe drop out the viego for a yorick for guardian washer and then play an alawi if you need uh, but basically the more frontline you have in this comp the better actually sorry in that case you probably drop the drop the karthus for a yorick and an alawi um, and then Executioner is just is just whatever because Kaelin's going to be our main source of damage and we just need Frontline. Uh, the longer the fight goes, the stronger we get and that's the whole point of this comp. One last thing to note, although Kale does have Shred, I believe it's only 20%, so at least we get a little bit more Shred from um, from a actual Shred item, so like an Ionic Spark. Uh, plus, it's just a good item in general with the new HP buffs and make sure that your Mordekaiser is decked out with other items such as like a Statfuss Heart, Crown Guard, uh, but other items such as like Gargoyle, Warmogs is fine as well. That's the Pentakill Kale reroll comp. Uh, I'll just talk about these two real quick. So the, actually I'll talk about it at the end as well, but something to note with reroll is it's just very consistent, uh, especially if you're uncontested. Like, yes, sometimes you'll hit the very low percentile chance of just never hitting. Like I think um, Soju took or K through Soju in tournament took the Infernal Contract, rolled all the way down, all all that gold for your his center three did not hit, and he went eighth. But that is a that's an anomaly. Uh, normally, by playing reroll, you're especially like a, a two cost, you are guaranteed to hit uh, if you manage your economy well. And then this way, you're able to punish the level eight players who decide to play standard or and stabilize around four cost carries. You're able to punish them once you hit your three star, and if they miss uh, their headliner specific. 
So that's why Reroll is pretty good. Uh, sometimes it's hard to cap out against the Heart Seal or like just the level 8 uh, standard boards because eventually they will, they'll be playing higher quality units than you are, like carrying multiple 4 costs instead of carrying 2 costs. But um, these comps, if you hit the Senna 3, hit the KO 3, especially with Mordekaiser 3, you can cap higher. You will definitely be able to top 4 and even net perhaps a better placement depending on your items and how fast you hit etc so those are the pros of reroll um you don't have that high of a ceiling however it is rather consistent and this is all about consistency especially in tournaments but even on ladder getting like multi farming multiple like seconds thirds is very good as opposed to like a first and then you go like seventh uh something like that so those are the pros of, of the reroll uh, and then we'll move on to the actual like standard board so standard remember this is going level eight either on four two or four five and rolling down and stabilizing around four cost carries instead so this is, we're going to talk about heart steel 80 flex uh so as the name suggests this is going to be a physical damage composition i mean this these the, okay this uh comp idea has been around for many many patches now however there's many different ways you can play about it I don't even include them all here. Like there's a collie variant as well. Uh, first thing I need to note is if you're looking to play five heart steel, then you need the HP. Um, it's the reason why, well, of course, you get much more hearts by losing, and ideally you want really good losses. So then on stage three to four, if you're playing heart steel, make sure that you have the HP to play it, uh, especially if you're raising the stakes then you need to either have like a HP regen or like a tiny Titans on three two something like that or else it's going to be very risky and you might be in a really tough spot later into the game so that's the first thing you need to note if you're a luxury player hard steel make sure that you have the hp to uh, actually play around it uh, as i mentioned 4-2 level 8 roll down we're going to be looking for many different headliners so this is why playing flex is quite good is we have so many different outs that most of the time we are guaranteed to hit something right so ezreal zed zach caitlin poppy akali these are all suitable uh, ad based flexible headliners that we can hit play on our board and will help us stabilize for stage four uh and then hopefully we are able to ca cap out by going level nine if our board is stable enough or just using the gold that we get from hard steel so any of these are applicable um this will be depending on what items you slam early so ideally you want to win streak early by slamming whatever 80 items you have on suitable carries. Uh, most of the time, this will be frontline frontline bruiser items, so things like Hodge or like Runons or like BT uh, Titans, and then playing like a bruiser Olaf or a Vi Mosher slash Urgot board, and then going into stage three to four, start playing that hard steel. Even if you lose, it's okay, and if you win, then that's great. Like you're winning and just getting gold. And then on stage four, we could look to play hard steel for the big cash out cash outs or use that HP to try to go level nine. So that's the whole idea of playing um, hard steel and 80 flex. And then based off what those items that we slammed early, we could then look for that specific headliner. So if we have um, like the frontline bruiser items, right, we'd much be more inclined to take a Zed and don't instantly have to take the Ezreal chosen. That's like big shot uh, at the very like start of our roll down or vice versa. If we played around uh like red buff early let's say even like um i don't know we're just playing like this is just an example right we had red buff and like infinity edge then we might want to skip something like the the poppy and keep rolling for like perhaps an ezreal or even a, like a backline carry so depending on what items you have will influence what highliners you take of course this is at the very start of your roll down by by getting to like 20 gold maybe even like 25 gold you just take whatever best you have and then you can play around from there so it's really good we have many variations many different outs that we can take for a board just make sure that the items you have are able to go on a carry uh, because this is 80 we want sunder so this will be in the form of either even shroud on our main tank or last whisper of course even shroud is a lot better last whisper is just not that great of an item especially not in an ezreal um, and then make sure to we're gonna have like two sides of our board so we split this directly in half right uh let's say we're strong side is going to be our left side right so this this means that our healing reduction or our oh sorry healing reduction and our uh physical damage like amp so our enemy armor reduction so in this case like the sunder the even shot is on the same side as our main carries so right in this board up above like Zed Ezreal Duo is going to be our main carry. We want the Even Shroud and Healing Reduction to be on the same side. And then everything else is just going to be like, these are just filler units, right? Like Seth is a filler unit. He's a trait bot. Misfortune is a trait bot. Aphelios is a trait bot. And then Zach has like some CC, which is really good. And then in the 
and the example below same thing so even throughout the same side we have our main carries so in this case we have the items for caitlin and then like zed caitlin ezra all on the same side um if caitlin wasn't itemized but lucian was then you guess that these two would be swapped so then the targets that our main carries are hitting are uh, have the even shroud like applied and are able to really crush through the left side of the board uh, of the enemy so keep that in mind when you have sunder and healing reduction and then last but not least uh eventually we could drop out a heart seal we want to be going level 9 eventually level 10 and cap out around like alawi's your solutions to and play from there so that is the whole idea of heart steel 80 flex um just really keep in mind what items you have like just anything you slime early to win save hp so you use that use that hp as a resource later especially in stage four i think caitlin items uh very different than ezreal items you don't want blue buff you don't want red buff and theoretically actually infinity edge is not even that good on her uh, because it's mostly her auto attacks that do most of the damage so things like um runons is really good deathblade is really good giant slayer is really good on caitlin as opposed to Ezreal which uses more ability cast based instead of just his auto tag so like blue buff red buff and infinity edge. so we this is a clear example of like auto attack based uh four cost carry and then like spell based four cost carry and then uh, that is completely different because he's a frontline bruiser where you want one healing reduction um edge, edge knight for aggro drop and then one damage either like a death blade giant slayer even like a rune on is fine on him so uh, that is Heart Steel Flex. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this comp before, just talking a little bit more about it. Uh, I'm going to move on now for just talk about a bit of tournament strategy. If you ever find yourself in a tournament like this, or even just like a smaller community one, and then we'll wrap everything up. So tournament strategy, uh, it's not like ladder where you want to be like, maybe you're just like, oh, I'm for fun or like, oh, I want to go for the big first. In tournament, you should just play for placements. Um, you can't go first every game and it's not worth to risk your entire game for like the maybe. Uh, it's better to play for the safe, like good. So our average good placement is more important than going for the risky first or eighths. Like as I mentioned earlier, like farming thirds, thirds, fourth, even like a second is much better than like first, seventh, eighth, first, because it's just way too risky and being consistent is much more better. Is much better. Um, sliming items. So sometimes we want to greed for bis. This can't always happen. It's much better to slam like suboptimal items early uh, and then like somehow end up with a fourth by like saving HP just like playing the course of the game rather than like greeting for best in slot on stage two and then you end up bleeding into a seventh because you just don't have the HP or you just you do end up getting the best best in slot items for your carries but you don't hit the units in time and then you're just low on HP. Now, this being said, the slamming items doesn't mean just slam whatever. They still have to be suboptimal or at least like playable. So keep that in mind before just saying like, oh, I'm just going to slam whatever to save HP and then go forth instead of going seventh, like Max said. Uh, make sure your item slams are still applicable for late game. So that's the tournament strategy. Um, the regional finals was great to watch. And that's everything for today's class. So I'll just re... Um, reiterate everything real real fast so true damage summary reroll is one of if one of the if not the best reroll right now i think senna kale and um i don't know senna kale katarina seraphine are very very good uh even yaswo sometimes and lulu depending on your augments but definitely a very solid one uh something to note is early game look for if you have like a rod or like even like a children uh, or a nashers opener so like bow and bow and uh belt and then also try to hold on to super fans i mean you should be holding on to super fans anyway this patch just because there's so many reroll comps that you can flex into depending on your item drops after krugs on 2-7 but to kill kale reroll uh, this is going to be a rod based a rod based comp remember so half rod from rage blade half rod from gun blade if you dropped a rod early and then once again hold on super fans you can perhaps have a kale angle and then heart seal 80 flex is mostly the best when you win streak early just by slamming your 80 items either on a vi chosen or an olaf chosen which are the two best chosens on this current patch um things like um, Bloodthirster, like Titans, even like Runons, Hodge, these are all good items that you could slam on them. Uh, Runons not so much, but the other three definitely definitely are good. And then late game, you can use that HP as a resource, play hard steel, get some good cash outs, cash out some Thieves Gloves, cash out maybe a Tome, some items, maybe a support item, or even a, like a dummy if you get a lot, and you're able to snowball your way from there. So that's everything for today. Um, I hope you learned something and 
uh, PPE for set 11, I think will be up on March 6th. And then live, I heard, will be going up on March 20th. So it is the end of the set. If you have any last like milestones you want to reach, this is your time to uh, climb and hit it. Uh, get that snapshot or even just like, I guess, that fulfillment. Uh, but you got this. Thank you all for watching. And those who are in the Discord, thank you for coming. Uh, all now in the stream.